welcome to the Mini Sculpting Super Show. So uh, before we get started, I just wanted to say how excited I am to be using this brand new mic. I um, want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel and allowing me to get this. So uh, in other news, it just started to rain a lot, so hopefully that won't come through. I guess it's a good test for the mic. So this is episode number 11, and in this tutorial we're going to be covering sculpting hands holding objects. In this case, in the tutorial, it's going to be this uh, pirate girl holding a uh, saber. So right in the beginning, first thing you need to do is you have a, you'll have the bare metal wire of the miniature. And what I did there, uh, while I was chit-chatting about nonsense, <laughs> was uh, I flattened out the hand. You don't have to do this, but I took my I took a big uh, pair of flat pliers, the red set that's on the table right now, and you basically crimp the wire flat. And what that does is it just gets a little more contact for the wire to the object that it will be holding, and it helps thin the wire so that it's not overly bulky when you start to add... Um, add on uh, material for sculpting the hand. Uh, I'm just doing a little test there. So once you get it flat you have to start you want to curl the wire around the uh, a bit so you're kind of creating a little hook and this will again simulate you know the hand your fingers wrapping around the object and it's going to be different depending on the type of object you're using in this case with the sword I have the, the sword's handle is bare metal wire still and I usually try and do that whenever I'm s attaching an object to a hand rather than have it wrap around say a puttied handle I like to have wire on wire because it just gives that much more room for you to uh, <clears throat> oh, what's it called that much more room for you to bulk up the handle and or, and or hand so in order to attach the weapon I, I like to do this, just it helps things go faster and it's a little more stable. And I like to use Loctite super glue. Um, I was going to dab a bit on directly from the bottle, but sometimes you can put too much on. So a good trick is to put a little bit on a spare piece of wire and then just dot it right into the little bit of the hook there. From there you take your object, in this case a sword, and you just hold it in place until it, uh, it sets up. And this stuff is great. This particular type of uh, Loctite I have is supposed to be a five second set and it it's, you usually does it. You don't have to use super glue, but like I said, it does go much faster. If you uh, can't because of mold breaking reasons or you just don't have access to it, green stuff works great. And Procreate can even work too. It's just not quite as sticky. And in that case, you just put a little bit of uh, green stuff on both the object and the hand, and, and while they're wet, you know, press it in there. You just have to watch it because uh, if depending on how the object's sitting in the hand, it might start to tip and uh, go out of dang it. Wow, it's really pouring. Anyways, it might start to go out at an odd angle. All right, once your piece is set, it's time to add on the first layer of putty. In this case I use green stuff because uh, this is uh, a lot of times when I'm sculpting hands over objects like this I'll actually sculpt the entire hand out of putty but in this case I wanted to show you that you can you can use the normal technique of, of sculpting the whole thing in Fimo but with that you do need that initial layer of putty to for the Fimo to stick to. And that's another reason why you want the bare metal wire on both the hand and the object, because it allows you to press the wire, the uh, putty onto the wire, much closer, much tighter, and it will leave room for you to have, put on the femo afterwards. All right. So, just dabbing a little bit on using the clay shaper. That's a flat chisel, number zero. That is a color shaper, rather, I should say. The uh, difference between that, I think, technically, well, that's a that's a gray one. That's a uh, 
What is that? That's firm. I think black is extra firm. But sometimes the black ones are considered um, clay shapers. And also sometimes is defined by the size of them. But any clay shaper will, will work. It's just a matter of your taste for how soft you want the silicone tips to be. So as I mentioned, just make sure you want to get the uh, this first layer of tight or green stuff as thin as possible and as tightly as possible because the closer the material is against the wire, the less likely it will be to move around as you sculpt and, and just work on the figure. All right, so got that part done. Now we're going to add the Fimo. And again, in the spirit of keeping things very thin, each layer very thin, um, as you saw there, I, I keep my the Fimo I'm using immediately on my thumb, and I'm, I'm flattening it out a bit with that tool before I put it on there. So you want to press it down, just get a little flat. You can do it with any tool, but this is a small area, so I'm using my small burnisher. Um, and then just pressing it in there. <clears throat> And you're putting this on while the green stuff is wet because uh, that way it still has a lot of tack to it and it will allow the, uh, as it cures, it will actually fuse a bit to the Fimo and helps keep it all uh, in one piece there. All right, I'm just gonna speed this up a little bit while I finish laying on that initial layer of Fimo and then we'll, we'll uh, bring it back down to speed once the uh, it's time to sculpt the hand. So now that first layer is down, and uh, I didn't wait for it to cure. Uh, a lot of times uh, when I'm initially skinning a figure, I like to let the whole thing cure and set up, but with a small element like this that's got super glue holding it, everything in place. Oh, I lost a tool. <laughs> it holds everything in place. It is, uh, I like to just, you can just keep going on with it and get it done much quicker that way. So, we've got that initial thin layer, and, and what that ends up creating it kind of basically creates the basic part, back part of the hand, and um, the lower palm, kind of near where your wrist is. You can build that up with that first little layer. What you saw me put on a little bit ago was I uh, basically added kind of the, the fingers, the front of the fingers wrapping around, and now I'm just adding a little more on the back of the hand to bulk up that knuckle area, because it was a little too small still and you couldn't quite see the shape of the actual hand. Just using my large burnisher, my Wax 5, one of my favorite tools to use for large uh, area bulking. And it's good even in small areas, but it just lets you work a lot of material at once which is uh, you should really try to do as much as you can with the large tool it just it really speeds things up it's very easy to get lost in the minutia uh, when you're sculpting with your smaller burnishers and things like that you really should only use them when you need them to get into that area uh, otherwise you just you can still achieve the same effect it'll just take you a lot longer So as with everything in sculpting, you want to make sure you bulk out the main shape first. So even on this small detail of the hand, I'm getting the main fist shape. You know, I'm uh, having to add on a little bit there on the arm because I realized the uh, arm looked kind of like it was bending strange as it went into the hand. So I straightened that out a bit. But you're going to add, you know, the, the main form of the, the knuckles, the way the fingers wrap around. You don't want to put individual fingers in until you set the shape and uh, area that all four fingers together will cover. The only time you really, that I really uh, sculpt an individual finger is, is in the case of the thumb, and that's just because it is, it really is a separate element. But as you'll see, oh no, I'm still patching up. I 
think I end up putting the thumb on after uh, I put the fingers on, but sometimes it can actually be helpful to put that on and do that first and then, um, then uh, sculpt and cut the fingers in afterwards. So I should say that this, uh, this video is uh, one of the uh, topics that my patrons have voted on to do. Asked for this. I've uh, I've done a, ha a hand series earlier, and I'll put videos up for it here, and um, that show links to the other tutorials I've done. Um, can't remember the names of them off the top of my head, but they'll they'll be up here in the annotations uh, so you can read what it is. But basically, it's one just sculpting a hand by itself, and um, yeah, I really can't remember what the other one is. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so there you just saw that I cut the fingers, and I, I think, so I guess I did not put the thumb on first. I guess I usually do it last, just so it gives you a little extra room to add in the details on the figures. So with fingers, uh, so really it's very easy. To, you can really make great looking fingers. The key is to get the main shape and the flow of the hand first. So the way the fingers, when they grab an object, they kind of stagger. You know, they don't just they're not just a block and so once you get that shape down and cut in then you can slice in lines in between the fingers to create them um, after that I take a probe tool and you press in divots into those lines and what that does is that kind of creates a bit of the rounded shape and it allows you to emphasize the knuckles which you will see in uh, hands in real hands And just doing a little bit of trimming there. Kind of fixing the palm, cleaning that up. And here we go with the, the thumb. It's nice to put that pad of your hand, of your palm, that connects to the thumb. I like to put that on first. Um, kind of establish that shape and helps give a little bit of a guide because um, the thumb is quite articulate on your hand it, it like it it's got the actual thumb only has the two digits rather than three like your fingers but it has that I don't know what the name of it is but it has that extra bit that allows it to kind of rotate around that's what allows it to grasp around objects so and just Patting that on, smoothing it out, and just adding a little bit extra, clean things up, and, and, and yeah, don't worry about it if you don't nail it right. You can either pop off the material altogether if you're using putty, uh, or even if you're using fumo and you're not liking what it looks like, just cut it off, or add a little bit on and just blend it in. It's very easy um, when you work with uh, the fimo. Or, or other polyclays, it's very easy to correct your miniature. And like I said, even with putty, you just uh, you're just under a time constraint when you're working with that. All right, so that's about it here. Once this was done, this was the last piece, uh, last thing I had to do on this figure. So I usually leave the hands to last. Just keeps the weapons out of the way, keeps things clear and easy to sculpt, and. Uh, once it's done, you'd be ready to bake it. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate it, all the viewers. Feel free to leave a comment below. And uh, yeah, give a try. Uh, sculpting hands holding weapons. It, it, it does seem daunting, and it, uh, it will take some practice. But it's really not as bad as you think. So you just got to do it. You just got to practice, practice. And, uh, yeah. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more great miniature tutorials and miniature talky things. And, uh, check out my Patreon to find out how you can vote on the next sculpting topics and support the channel. I really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah. Keep sculpting. <laughs>